Jamie has something called the Dwara and Baya Rashis. Okay? Those are the transitional Rashis that can create periods of transition with your Jamie Dasha. That indicates the big changes where you make a huge transition. And that transition is often the time when you leave something or let something behind. Okay? Um, he covers this in Sutras 242 to Sutra 246. First Sutra, he says, the Dasha Rashi is the doorway. So Dwara means the door. This is the Dwara and Baya Rashi. So basically, the first Rashi we're concerned with is the door. And it's simply the Dasha sign. So if this person's in Virgo, Dasha, Virgo is called the door Rashi. Well, what's a door? It's something you're walking through. So we're thought, as this Dasha is happening, we're thought to be walking through um, a door out into the world. Okay, at some point we're going to walk through that door. We're standing at the door of that Dasha. Okay. Then he says, from there, for so long thus is the outside. The outside is ba um, Bayam or Baya, which means the outside. So we have the doorway and the outside. So when you're in the Dasha and then you go into the Antar Dasha of the outside, that's when you step through the door into the outside. And that's, it. that's symbolic of the transitionary time in the Dasha. Okay? Um, and it's a really important time all, always. Okay? Now, this Sutra 243 requires a little more explanation. He says, from there, for so long, this is the outside. Well, what does that mean? It means a couple things. First, it means that, let's take Virgo Rashi. Virgo is one, two, three, four, five Rashis from the Lagna. Okay? That means the doorway is five Rashis from Virgo. So Virgo Capricorn is going to be a transitional period for the Virgo Dasha. Okay? Just that simple. Use Rashis for this. And only count forward. So even though Virgo is an even sign, the transition is not going to be Virgo counted five backwards to Taurus. We, for this technique, we always count forwards to the door to the outside. Okay. So that's one way it's used. That's the common way it's used, and it's it's really important to use it that way. It, it works amazing. But I've also found there's a second doorway. Okay. And I find that doorway to be important as well. And that is, depending on the sign that the Rashi is, going that many places from the sign is another outside. So Virgo, again, is the doorway. The Virgo is the sixth sign. Therefore, the sixth sign from Virgo will be the outside once again. So, from Virgo, the sixth is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, Aquarius. So, Aquarius is going to be another kind of doorway. Okay? Generally speaking, the doorway that's counted from the Lagna is more important than the doorway counted from the Rashi. But I've seen time after time that that doorway from the Rashi is a transitional period. So, you want to look for both of them. Okay? It's really simple to find the doorway and the outside. Okay? Then it's reading, reading it, seeing what the nature of the transition is. He goes, a malefic in those, meaning both the doorway and the outside, there will be bondage, disease, etc. Which means when there's a malefic in those, life is going to suck, you're not going to move forward, things are going to go wrong, you're going to feel horrid mentally, emotionally, physically. You're going to feel horrible about the things that you have to deal with. And if it's a person thing, you won't be able to, be able to get along with them. Base indicates a strenuous, breakdown-type transition. Okay? And in fact, if that Rashi is really beat, it can be the end of that thing. Okay? Then he says, that in own Rashi among this, which means if the malefics are in their own signs, Okay? They only have to be exalted or Mulitricona, just own sign or better. So own sign, Mulitricona, or exalted. 
then they will not create the troubles in the transition. And not Jupiter's protected. So if Jupiter is conjunct or Rashi aspecting the doorway or the outside, then you're not going to have this Torah transition. It'll be, it'll help save you. Jupiter in Gemini in this context is the plant, is the saving grace, the little bit of grace that gets you out of the worst binds. Okay? Then finally he says, everywhere the Rashi planet yoga said everywhere about this. So, everything that we've learned about Rashis and planets and planetary influences and nature of planets, we're supposed to apply to this. Um, we're supposed to apply to this. So the things we've learned um, so far about all the planets and how you know dry planets affect things and separating planets and manifesting planets and malefics and male planets and sattva planets, all that stuff, all the natures of the planets, we want to apply to these um, doorway and outside signs to see the nature of this transition. Okay, so any malefic is going to create bondage, disease, and trouble. But it's only the separating planets, you know, the separating Sun, Saturn, the Twelfth Lord from the Rashi, um, that are going to actually cause a separation. Okay? And of course, the one that's going to cause the most bondage, disease, and misery is going to, in general, be Rahu. Okay? And even K2 being in the dasha, in the doorway or the outside, will cause you to feel stuck with things at that point. Okay, because ultimately K2 is a malefic, a cruel planet that makes you feel stuck and frustrated with things in life. So, as, as a practice of this, let's just look at all the dashas here. Okay, so in Taurus dasha, Taurus is the first house, therefore the outside is the first from the first. So Taurus Taurus is the doorway and the outside. That would be a pretty safe dasha because it's only Rashi aspected by its Lord. So that would be a beautiful transition, a transition into a beautiful garden of an outside world. So whatever this Rashi Dasha is indicating will transition and bloom into something wonderful in Taurus Taurus. Okay. Now Taurus is also the second sign from Aries and the second from Taurus is Gemini. So the other outside for Taurus would be Taurus Gemini, another transition with the Taurus relevant things. Okay, um, that would be a decent transition because Jupiter's in it. It's Rashi aspected by Mercury. It does have Rashi aspects of Saturn and Rahu, but Jupiter is going to keep anything toward from happening because Jupiter always protects the doorway and the outside, as Jamie mentioned. Oh, another thing I wanted to mention, Jamie is like really you know spe specifies a malefic in those. He's very much about them being in it. However, I've also found that pl the pl you have to really pay attention to the planets that are Rashi aspecting the doorway and the outside if there's no planets in the sign. If there's planets in the sign, pay most attention to that planet, but realize that other planets are affecting things. To the you know, But if there's no planet in the doorway and no planet in the outside, then do pay attention to the signs aspecting it and the planets they hold. And if those are all troublesome, separating Rahu planets, then they can destroy that. They can be a very painful um, transition going on during that time. Okay? All right. Um, Gemini Rashi. Gemini is the second from the Ascendant. The second from Gemini is Cancer. So the outside of Gemini is pretty good because Jupiter's there. The, or the doorway of Gemini is good because of Jupiter. The outside is really nice because of Venus. So nice, rock, nice do doorway and outside there. Then um, Gemini is the third sign from the Ascendant. The third from the third is Leo, which is holding a benefic moon, a sun in its own sign, and Rashi aspected by Mars from its own sign. So that's a nice Leo. Okay. So that's going to be another nice transition for Gemini. Okay? 
What kind of transition? Well, a financial transition because Gemini rules the second house. Okay? It would be one of the transitions. Also, a Jupiter transition because, you know, maybe children can't transition with children because Jupiter's in the second house. So a transition just means we're shifting something from one level of how it is to another level of how it is, for better or worse. Okay? Once they go into Cancer, Cancer is the third from the Ascendant. So the third from Cancer is Virgo, and that will be the outside of Cancer. It's holding Mercury exalted, so it's going to be pretty good. Okay? Then you've got Cancer is also the fourth sign from the Ascendant. And the fourth from the fourth is Libra. So Libra is the, another doorway to from Cancer. Okay, that doorway is not as important, especially because there's no signs in it. But it's a decent, nice doorway because the Sun and Moon are in it, are influencing it. So basically, every dasha, you're going to have two transitions. Um, the bigger transition will tend to be in the doorway as determined from, or the, the outside is determined from the Lagna. Okay? That'll be the major transition, but the other one's well worth looking for. So in Leo Dasha, which is the fourth from the Ascendant, the fourth from Leo Scorpio, Leo Scorpio will be the doorway and outside. Nothing's in Scorpio, but it's Rashi aspected by its Lord, gives it a second source of strength. So that would be a favorable transition once again. A good, solid transition. Still, Mars is there, so that'll take a lot of energy and effort. Um, but it'll be a favorable transition, but with a lot of busyness. When they go into Virgo, um, Vir well, we already covered Virgo, so let's go to Libra. Libra is the sixth from the Ascendant. So the sixth from the sixth, which is Pisces over here. So Libra Pisces would be a doorway and outside. That one's going to be a bit more tough. The doorway is pretty good, Rashi aspected by Sun and Waxing Moon, but the outside is not very good because it holds Rahu. So that'll be a more confused transition, but one that will work out okay in the end thanks to Jupiter's influence to the sign. Okay? Libra's other transition as being the seventh sign, well the seventh from Libra is Aries, would be Libra Aries. And that's looking good because Mars is in its own sign. It's Rashi aspected by the sun from its own sign and waxing moon. So another good transition. So, so far the most difficult transition of this person is looking to be Libra Pisces. From Scorpio, which is the seventh from the ascendant, Scorpio Taurus is the transition. Um, they're both Rashi aspected by their lords. Ra Scorpio by Mars, Taurus by Libra. Another nice transition. Scorpio's the eighth sign. The eighth from there is Gemini, which holds Jupiter. Pretty nice transition. Here we go into Sagittarius Dasha, holding Saturn. That promises a pos that's, that indicates the possibility of a troublesome transition. Okay. Um, as the eighth from the ascendant, the outside is Cancer over here with Venus, luckily. So the outside is nice, but the doorway is a bit difficult. So they'll have to deal with some problems. But once they deal with those problems, the transition will be into a very nice place of Venus. And of course, Jupiter, Rashi aspecting the doorway, Sagittarius, is going to make it pretty, ma very manageable to deal with any problems that are in the doorway. Problems in the doorway are things you just have to take care of on your way to the outside, which in this case is Cancer with Venus in it. Okay. Um, Sagittarius is the ninth from the ascendant, or ninth sign. So the ninth from Sagittarius, Leo, becomes the second door, doorway, or outside, and that's solid too. So still, the most difficult transition we have, I think, is going to be the Libra Pisces. From Capricorn, the doorway is decent. Rosh, yes, it's good actually. Waxy moon and strong sun influencing Capricorn. The outside from Capricorn. Um, well, it's the tenth from the ascendant. The tenth from there is Libra, which is fortified with moon, um, waxy moon, and a strong sun. So that's a totally good transition once again. Okay. Um, Capricorn is also the. I'm sorry. Capricorn is the tenth from Aries, so the Libra is the second outside. Capricorn is the ninth from the ascendant from Taurus here. 
So the ninth from that, which is Virgo, is the outside of Capricorn, the primary outside of Capricorn. And that's going to indicate a pretty good transition too because of Mercury. So each of these Mahadashas, when they have their transitional periods, they're going to transition to a better life. The only one that's going to transition them to a life that they kind of go, how did this happen, is Libra, Pisces. And it won't even be that bad thanks to Jupiter's influence. Okay? But let's keep going. Let's see if we can find one that's going to be a little more tricky. Um, this person in Aquarius um, is the tenth from the ascendant. The tenth from there is Scorpio, which we've seen as solid with its Lord, no problems there. So that's an average transition. It's also the eleventh sign. The eleventh from there is Sagittarius, which is holding Saturn. So Aquarius, Sagittarius is going to be a bit of a more difficult transition. But again, with Jupiter aspecting, it'll melt those difficulties away. And with Mercury aspecting, it'll actually give some good things. So it's not a terrible transition. Rahu um, is in the 12th sign, or is in the 11th house. The 11th from there is Capricorn, which is solid by sun and moon. So even though the doorway has Rahu in it, the outside is nice. So this is a nice chart in the con... Well, one more, two more to go. Hold on. Um, so from Pisces, the 12th sign, the 12th from there is Aquarius, Rashi aspected by Mars in its own sign, and Venus. So a nice benefic Venus and a malefic that's not hurting anything. So that's a nice outside too. So even though the doorway of Rahu is difficult because of Rahu, it's not overly difficult thanks to Jupiter's Rashi aspect. And Saturn, oh, and then the, you know, the Aquarius is really nice due to Venus, so it's all good. Mars, the doorway is solid with Mars in its own sign, aspected by waxing moon. It's a good doorway that can lead to a good life, good transition. It's the 12th sign. The 12th from there is going to be um, Pisces. So Aries, Pisces can be a bit of a Rahu transition. But again, Jupiter aspects, the doorway itself, Mars is solid. So while there'll be some confusion in that transition, nothing terrible. So this person's never showing a Torah transition in his Rashi chart to his life's path, okay, in any dash at any time. Some periods with a bit of Rahu confusion, some transitions that are going to be a bit, you know, hard due to Saturn, just take a lot more work and time and be delayed due to Saturn's um, being in the doorway a couple times. But all in all, this person's transitions in the Rashi are going to be pretty smooth, okay? But this is just to show you how to find these transitions. I just want to make sure you you know what to look for. Um, and when it comes to predicting with the Jamie Dashes, these transitions are really, really important to look at. Okay, so from now on, as we explore some more example charts in the next videos, we will be paying a lot of attention to these transitionary periods. In fact, when I look at a Rashi Dasha, the first thing I jump to is I say, oh, When's the transition coming? Or are they in it right now? Oftentimes they'll be in it and that's why they're in front of you. Okay? Um, these principles of using Antar Dashes that I've talked about in the last two videos and these principles of the, the doorway and the outside, the Dwaya and Baya Rashis, those principles apply to the nine Jaimini Dashes that are predictive that have movable dasha lengths or you know char dasha lengths and those ones again are the ones Jamie talks about in the beginning of this sutra um, or this chapter you know the nine movable dashas which are charanavamsha, aya, swakendra, chatushtaya, manduka, yogard, drig, trikrona and swadasha okay so you want to use these principles of antardashas, um, you know, for timing an event, for seeing the ups and downs in an event, um, and the dwaya and baya. Now, for the other three dashas, you also use these timing and ups and downs. But this tr this transitional thing that we're talking about, that's indicated by the the Dwaya and Baya Rashis by the doorway and outside, that is a transition that does not apply to the other three predictive dashas that Jaimini mentions, which are 
you know, a type of Vimshatri and Kalachakra Dasha, which are the Nakshatra pair. Um, something called Lagnadi Rashi Dasha. And then um, that's one way it's called. It's also called Tara Arkamsha Dasha. And then the other one is the Niryana Shula Dasha, which is a health related one um, that has fixed Dasha lengths. Okay. But for your event dashas, um, always pay a lot of attention to these transitional periods. They're extremely important. Okay? And we'll be paying, every time we look at a dasha now, we'll be paying attention to this. Also, when you're in an antar dasha, apply this doorway and outside thing to the dasha sign, or to the, you know, the third level, the bhukti sign. Okay? There's a slight difference. Say they're in the Antar, say they're in Leo, Libra, okay? From the Ascendant, Leo's the fourth. So the outside for Leo is going to be the fourth from Leo, which is Scorpio, okay? When it comes to the Antar Dasha, though, the Antar Dasha is Libra. The transitional period, the outside to Libra, is not going to be... You know, if like Libra from the Ascendant is the 6th from the Ascendant, right? So we're not going to go 6 from Libra to find the outside for Libra and Tridasha. We're going to calculate Libra from the Dasha. The Dasha itself is Leo. Leo Libra is the 3rd from Leo. Therefore, the 3rd from Libra will be the transition to the outside. So, um, Leo, Libra, Sagittarius will be the transition in the Libra Antar Dasha, if you want to find the transition for the Antar Dasha. If they're in Cancer, well from Cancer, Libra is the fourth. So Lib Cancer, Libra, Capricorn, the fourth from Libra, is going to be the outside to Libra and the transition period. So for the Antar Dasha, and you want to find the transition period within the Antar Dasha based on the third level Bhukti, you calculate how far the Antar Dasha sign is from the dasha sign itself instead of the lagna. That's the only change you make, otherwise you use the doorway and outside exactly the same. Okay? Um, so that's really the only special principle to predicting with the Jaimini dashas. Okay, there's nothing else special. Everything else is common sense. Um, in fact, he has one other sutra. Let's see, let me find it just a second. Okay, at the end of the chapter with the predictive dashas, he gives two, two sutras for indications for a beneficial dasha. He says, benefic union in the house, an auspicious condition, or an exalted indicates an auspicious dasha. So even a malefic, cruel, separating planet that's exalted in the dasha rashi is going to indicate a good dasha. Okay? And he's emphasizing the planet in the house over the planet's aspecting it. Okay? And that's true. The planet's aspecting it will give an up or down in its antardasha. But the planet in or asp in the you know the planet in the dasha sign itself is gonna give the mainstream dasha effect. And then he says otherwise, otherwise, which means malefic union in the house, an inauspicious condition or a debilitated planet in the house indicates an inauspicious dasha. So a debilitated benefic um, is going to, in, a, in the dasha rashi, is going to indicate a dasha with problems. Okay? So he emphasizes the, the planet in the sign over aspects. So it's not something to keep in mind. This is a very obvious idea, but the fact that he's emphasizing conjunctions in the sign, plants in the sign over aspects is important. Okay, So that's the basic way you find the indications for a beneficial dasha. Really common sense. Like I said, the only special principle really is this principle of the dwaya and um, baya rashi, the doorway and the outside. It's a principle unique to Jaimini. Um, that without it, you'll miss important, important times in every antardasha. Oftentimes, the most important time in the antardasha are indicated in this time. It's not always the best time or the worst time, 
But the important time is what's indicated by this Dwaya and Vaya. It's when you make that transition into the, really you make that transition fully into that Rashi at that time and everything it, it means. Um, so really, really important. Okay, um, from now on we'll be dealing with all these principles as we look at some more examples. Thank you.